Hi guys, morning, another week and we've been finishing off a few little things. I know last on the last week's video Sam kind of did this big throwing down of the tools moment but that wasn't quite how it ended up being. There was quite a few things that we had left to sort of get done. We had to finish the barn off. So we did do some time lapse footage of Sam and Ewan clearing out the barn putting visqueen down on the floor because when we come back from the UK we will have quite a few things with us so we needed somewhere to put them immediately <laughs> well we've got a heavy rock heavy rock music to get through this like Amil and the Sniffers because you're lifting heavy rock and Metallica <laughs> and Slipknot um, <clears throat> yeah you can see here Woo! Already. You see how we just pulled the boulders. This is what they put back in in the day. There's a few there, but I might just leave them ones. But we're going to put this screen on the floor here. Uh, that side's okay, but literally, you can see what I'm dealing with here. You have to fight. You have to fight here for every. They're so bloody welded in, you have to. If you can. See, you gotta just find them bit by bit. You have to chip and chip and chip like that. Just pull them out and you get the point. I just want to get it flat, and then we can use this as a temporary store area. So there's not that much. You can see how much I've done. It might not look a lot on the camera here, but there's a probably way over a hundred stones there. It was for the cow's uh, hooves back in the day. That's why the, it would have been like this. And then they would have put a bed of stones down and then put hay over the top of it. And then all the poo and hay over years and years creates, you know, all this stuff, which is amazing compost. We're which keeping will, it, aren't we? Because we kept be... it, made a pile of it because it'll come in for planting. And then we can secure this place up. That was one of our last jobs before we go back and sell the motorhome is to get this place kind of cleared out so that when we come yeah. back with all our stuff... Like a lock-up, in a way. We've got somewhere to put it all because otherwise we'll come back in the van and realise, ah, oh, got nowhere to put it all. Yeah, because we have got, we have got loads and loads, but we've got a bit of stuff and we need somewhere to put it because the time will come when I take the roof off the house and I'm going to need to put stuff somewhere while I do that. And then and they obviously dig the floors out in here. These need digging down yet, like another, how much? A foot, mm. a foot. But for now, this will just, sun is cleared and we can use it as a storage. Yeah. Then we're all good, aren't we? Yeah. I mean, I'm going to have to move all that stone again. <laughs> yeah, but it is going to be come in lot. because there's a lot of patching. Don't know if anyone can see where my, my bits of stone walling come in here and there. Just to like, these are old holes for something. I don't know, maybe they used to chuck the poo out of there. But that was a hole and I'm just making it up as I go along. And there must have been a loft because obviously there's the holes for the, yeah, the um, joister, yeah. joists. And that's been painted white for some reason, but yeah. So it, um, and there's that. And the roof is solid. Someone's even uh, Yeah, the roof's decent. It's decent. There's a couple of little holes in here and there, but... Oh, yeah, but I mean the structure of it. But I will put another rafter in between these two here, because that's a big span. And then, obviously, we, we'll decide what we're going to put on the roof. Um, our digger driver, Tom, did say to us about coming up to his house to see... I think it's his father-in-law's an architect, a good architect, and uh, he has a few ideas of roofing. And Tom said, well, it was like this tin idea, but it had some kind of plastic coating on it, so it looks nice. And he was like, no chance, I'm not doing that. But he said, honestly, it's what I've done to the main house. Come and have a look. So We're going to go and have a look, haven't we? go and have a look, cost-effective-wise, and yeah, obviously and it's all light. insulated in the rafters and over the rafters, battened, boarded. So there'll be apparently there's no noise. It's going to be super heat efficient. The floor will be damp proofed, and this will be all pointed and lime rendered on the inside here. New windows and doors, and then voila, one building. Obviously the electrics and plumbing. That's that's another section. But 
let's just get the goddamn building done first and up. I can't wait. It's gonna take a while to point it. You can see how someone's tried here. <laughs> State of that. All these, these are oak. These lint old oak, but they're, they're wrecked. And they're too low anyway. So I'll be putting some strong boys in up here. And then I'll put some new lintels in and get away with them. Cause that, I don't even like being near it. Yeah, this one's really dodgy, isn't it? You, the the camera side. probably won't do it justice, but you can see the bowl on the timber there. Someone's tried to shore it up with a bit of bloody, that's, a, that's off a door, a bit of a hinge, a bit of a pin. It's a death trap. So yeah, same again, strong boys in, new lintels. Packing up there as well underneath the wall plate. If you can see, look how it's just been balanced. <laughs> balanced on, so. It's a bit dodge really, isn't it? Let's be honest. It's solid, but it wants doing proper. Oops, it wants doing there uh, properly. This side isn't too bad because it was that concrete, could, isn't it? We could probably on put floor, um, a log burner through it. there, couldn't we? Yeah, so eventually. This here, I don't know if you can see, there's the camera bringing that up. <clears throat> that was in the ground up to there. And that was in the floor over here. They obviously used to so tether up. They used to shackle the... The cows. They used to bring the cows in that door there. All this was divided, which I took down. So they'd bring the cows in, and then they'd go out there into where the big steel posts were, and that's where they could do castration. They could give them injections, and then they would let them out the steel gate the other end. But we've ripped all that out there now, so... Um, it's really heavy. Um, but yeah, just keep chipping, just keep chipping away. Keep the blisters going on my hands. Obviously, so just a bit of a bit of this now. A bit of screwing. Try and make it. Oh, we're even, we're even got off grid power, haven't we? Yeah? <laughs> Done amazing. Well, that's been a task. Considering so what it was long. like. Look at all those stones. It's what you call a man cave. Yeah. yeah. Well, it will be. Well, it won't be. It'll be something else. <laughs> For now, it's somewhere we can put everything. All this that you see was in our van. In our motorhome, yeah. <laughs> All of this was in our motorhome. This is only some of it. We literally just pulled up here in the motorhome with mostly just things that we've been travelling yeah. with. And we've just been cracking on until we get back to England. So we emptied a three bedroom house Downsized. Downsized it. Into a motorhome and into storage. Into a motorhome and then the rest of the storage, the rest sold or given away. Yeah. And then we had to put the old motorhome next to the, the one we got now. The static. And then move all of that stuff over into that motorhome. And then we went round Ireland and Scotland and realised half the stuff we had we didn't need. So then we, when we come back to England, we got rid of more of the stuff. And then some stuff went in storage, which is very small storage, 100 square foot. And then... Now, the motorhome emptying that into a mobile and here, all within 12 months. It's, uh, it's some achievement. 
sometimes you feel like you're not doing enough and you're like but when you look at the big picture you're like i think we've done well <laughs> in the past few days past week i think we've done i think all of us including the kids have yeah. done well. kids have been good it's uh i don't think you would have got this all done without you and no he's been my little barrowing. barrel lad he's helped he's helped to stack in the stones he's helped with just general just stuff and uh you couldn't ask more from a 10 year old kid no. So hopefully he'll grow up with the value if he knows what hard work is and uh but I've told him to uh work smart, not hard. <laughs> so don't go down my route and be a joiner. If he wants to be a pilot, concentrate on being a pilot. Fulfill your dreams, kid. That's mm -hmm. what I tell him. So we did that and then I finished off clearing some of the ivy off the walls of the building. Uh um I probably wasn't adhering to health and safety, so don't judge but I'm still here to tell the tale and I'll be more careful next time before I get all the messages about I should have been wearing a hard hat and blah blah, blah. yes I should have anyway Um, but it's sad times today because we're leaving um, for who knows how long. Um, got to go and sell the motorhome, I know we've mentioned it, but we have got to go and sell George, the trusty Adria Matrix that's driven us all around Europe. But he's just too, too expensive. We need the money now to kind of get on with the renovations of the house. Um, so we're having to leave everything and... Um, with no kind of return date at the moment because it just depends on how long it takes us to sell the motorhome really. So I'm just having a little last walk around. Really bizarre because we've moved out of the motorhome once and into the static and then now we're moving back from static into the motorhome with the bare essentials only because we are going to have to spend maybe one or two nights in it. Um, I'm going to have to move back into my mum's house and dad's house and Sam's going to go and stay at his sister's and we're going to split the kids between us and swap and change because we can't stay in George because we'd have to have him pristine for viewings so we'll be moving back in with family and it's going to be great to see everybody I'm really excited to see all my family and friends but it's going to be really sad to leave our little piece of paradise and um, but it'll be exciting to see when we come back how much has changed and how much has grown and yeah so lots going on we're getting the ferry from dublin to hollyhead so it's about two hours to get to uh dublin from here now in the motorhome and then once it's two hours on the ferry and then once we dock uh, it's another about two and a half hours back to where we live in south manchester or lived parents live you know um so yes just thought to say a little bye to the place and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some footage on, some before and afters of what we've done so far, which it's a lot really, actually. We've done a lot, um, but we needed to get the land sorted, uh, ready, because we can't renovate somewhere with all that rubbish around. It needed to go.
we've done all that so that's been quite successful really so off we go back to the uk fingers crossed for a quick sale and we get to come back quickly and crack on before it gets really cold last few nights though i've been freezing in the, in the static so i think we really need to think about what we're going to do about warming that up because it's an old static it's got no double glazing no central heating there's just one gas fire in the living room so we're going to stock up on the warm clothing and thick duvets when we get back and yeah and then see how we go but we might have to invest um we might put the diesel heater in the back of the static which we had in george and it worked quite well oh, i don't know we have to think things through because power is a problem for us because we're off grid so we are relying on not using too much electricity um so yeah it's a bit tricky really trying to work out because i think we're going to be really bloody cold to be honest over the winter here in that static but we'll manage we'll manage um it's just good to be here really and i'm conscious of not moaning i didn't think i moaned apparently i do moan or sam moans or both moan i don't know but we're really grateful that we're here we're, we're not moaning it's just that obviously there's always going to be issues that you have to face and things are difficult not always easy but yes that's an update of where we are so yep yeah, we're about to go now there's georgie and the static we had some friends come meet and um, stay with us overnight friends from my university time and they came because they're touring around ireland in their adria twin so that was lovely having visitors first time sam's just um doing a few bits in the barn over there getting things secured ready for us to go and yeah off we go to dublin to catch the ferry see you there getting on the poshest ferry i think we've ever been on swift the the uh, irish ferries two hour bad boy swift it's like a low line of ferry with blacked out windows oh my god i wonder if it's got a dj so we're gonna have to rush even There's faster a bit of, a bit of goddamn pushing in going on here yeah we have to rush because we never book seats so no. it's always a bit of a panic we know to go the crack get, now yeah we, kit we run run upstairs <laughs> and get a seat because everything on ferries now if you notice it's premium you know, you want a comfy seat? Yes, you have to pay extra for that. Unless you, they, they normally can get a, a spot in the bar or whatever, but you have to rush. It's usually like three different lounges. So, well, we're going in. Look at that for swish. Isn't it? Posh that. Nice. I don't think. We haven't been on one like this, have we? Never been on anything like that before. Have we finished struggling at the uh, motorbikes oh. coming off? Yamaha Tenery 700 there, AT tyres on, right across Europe on that, and the farm. Yeah. <laughs> That's what's needed in Ireland. Can you add in and the farm just so you can make it relevant and so you might get a chance of getting one? I am getting one. <laughs> well, where are we? We're in Hollyhead, Wales. Wales. Oh my God! There's a 1290 Super Duke. Oh. Oh yeah, oh, chicken chaser, that'll do. Anything. Chicken chaser. As long as it rolls. Might need one of them on the farm. Oh no, in another light we're gonna get out. Uh. Motorhomes last. <laughs> oh he is, he's letting all the cars out. Uh. <laughs> morning. A bit sleepy this morning. It's, uh, yeah, Sunday. And, uh, yeah, we're basically here in Stockport at the moment. We've got the, I don't know if you can see it over there. We've got the uh, <clears throat> the van on Auto Trader, various different sites for sale. Um, as soon as it's done, basically, we'll be purchasing probably another van, like a normal van. Um, not a motorhome or a camper van, just a van, so that we can get all of our stuff and uh, take it back over to Ireland and get over there and, you know, start the process of turning the ruin into home basically so at the minute staying at Rebecca's parents house um, the kids are staying with my mum and my sister and then we're all swapping round I'll have Ewan with me or Isabella with mum and we just we're basically we're sofa surfing at friends and family's houses at the moment so it's uh we're still drifting a little bit until we can get the motorhome sold 
Well, at least we're all warm and hungry and fed and it's not the end of the world, basically. Feels a bit weird sleeping in different beds, different places, different houses, but you know, I think in the end, it'll all be worth it and we'll look back on this and go, jeepers. Do you remember what it was like when, you know, it's not even, it'll be 12 months at the end of this, end of this month, it'll be 12 months since we locked the door in our house as we knew it, left our businesses, took the kids with us, out of the school system, um, we'd already been in home education with Ewan for a while, Isabella finished to end of infants and juniors, and then we went travelling around Europe, you know, through 16 different countries, met so many amazing people, um, other families that we stayed in contact with, and we, and we probably will be, you know, friends for... I'm just going to shift up here a little bit, because spider webs all over me. We probably will be friends, you know, forever, and which is great to increase the networks, and the people we've met in Ireland so far have been amazing. Um, <clears throat> and, and the network's just going to get bigger there as well, which is great. It's very fast paced here in Stockport and it's it's quite a strange, surreal feeling coming back into a, into a city again. Having been in the countryside for so long, hearing birds and cows and, you know, digging most of the time, as you've seen from the previous vids, um, and what we've done so far. So it's a strange one this week. It's, uh, yeah, I'm just going to clean the van a little bit more on the front, get some miracle shine on it. And we're literally just waiting for that phone to ring for someone to say, can I come and have a look? Um, we sold some little bits that we had, sat nav, there's cameras, just stuff. Um, but yeah, we're just literally biding time waiting to sell the van so that we can move on to the next step, which is uh, get back to Ireland and get cracking basically with the uh, with life and with the build and starting integrating into the community. and great so only a short one this week people but this is where this is where we are at the minute and this is what we're doing is uh, just waiting for the van to sell but we shall be back and we shall start the building process all right well I shall see you in a while <laughs>